Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Last time we have talked about the moral leadership and uh, in continuation of that uh, today we will uh, uh, interact on the role of ethics and values in organizational leadership is there. In these presentations uh, we will understand first uh, what are the values, the definition of values, then the sources of values, types of values, definition of ethics, uh, then the ethical leadership, uh, four ethical dilemmas, ethical versus unethical climate. Uh, this and as usual the research paper case study and book recommendations will be there. Whenever we are talking about the values uh, then definite uh, in that case uh, uh, basically uh, we values are the basic and fundamental belief hmm? value system. Uh, so, always we comment on this what is your value system is there uh, why um, that is the whenever we are having this attitude and behavior right. This attitude uh, generation of attitude is based on the value systems and that uh, uh, those value systems they they are converting into the our behavior also right uh, and uh, uh, a, as a result of which th these uh, beliefs uh, which are creating the attitude and behavior they guide or motivate uh, uh, our attitudes or the actions are there and therefore, in that case it becomes very very important that what attitude do we have. Basic convictions that a specific mode of conduct or the end state of existence is personally or socially preferable to an opposite or the converse the mode of conduct or end state of existence is there. Many of the values we hold uh, are established in our early years uh, uh, by parents, teachers, friends and others are there. So, therefore, the environment, environment plays a very great role in developing our values. What happens the child from the childhood uh, uh, the, uh, he has the observations, one has the observations observations and on basis of the observations. So, uh, uh, from where he gets the observations? He ob gets the observations from the society that is uh, who are the parents and what has been taught by the parents are interact or the observed and perceived by that child right. So, therefore, in that case many times parents are surprised that is we have not uh, taught him, but how he has learned this value. So, it, it is because of the, uh, the uh, uh, surrounding environment which uh, in which the child has grown up. So, values are socially uh, as per the R.K. Mukherjee is concerned values are socially approved uh, desires and goals. So, actually um, there may be many observations, but we we absorb those observations which, which we approve right and therefore, suppose I say the honesty is the best policy, hmm? but in that case the approval of this policy is very very, very important. So, it is not that persons are not know, knowing about this policy, they know, but there is either approval or not approval. Values are conscious or unconscious motivators and the justifiers of the actions and judgments are there and therefore, in that case these are the values uh, which are creating this type of this uh, environment uh, in which uh, they uh, either uh, the uh, uh, responding, responding to the environment. And therefore, whenever we are talking about the responding to the environment, so that actions and judgments are dependent on that right. So, naturally uh, they whatever will be the environment, uh, then that will be justified while responding through our values. We believe that something is good and desirable. Right. So, value is a very positive term and whenever we are talking about the value, then in a given situation the value is desirable. Uh, for example, whenever you are into a, a, a business, then there are certain values that will be there. That is the uh, many many slogans you will find that the people say that customer satisfaction is our value system. So, that is a desirable. A powerful force uh, affecting behavior. Uh, so, therefore, values are the uh, force uh, which is driving the behavior. Values contain a judgment element in that they carry an individual's ideas as to what is right or what is desirable is there. So, as uh, in the previous slide we have seen in the definition also it has been given that is it justifies, it justifies your behavior. 
So, from behavior also we can find out that what is the value system of the individual. Uh, provides a way to understand the organization. Now, organizational values are there and organizational values are creating the organizational culture and that culture again that creates the value system into the new employees. So, therefore, it is very important to understand the organization help to differentiation with what is right, what is wrong. Right? And therefore, in that case whenever we say that is this is the particular value which is uh, uh, has to be followed or this decision is to be taken. Uh, so, that this decision will be depending on that what is right and what is wrong. Then determine the retention and uh, important is this that is the what happens in the life there will be the positive effect there will be the negative effect uh, Pana is there and whenever there is a negative effect are you still stick to the your values or you are not stick to your values and that will decide about our value systems is there. Sources of values are our homes, school, society, friends, TV, then the church, music, books, families actually with whom we interact and we learn, we observe, we sense senses. Our senses they decide about the sources of values are there and whatever we learn from the school, wh whatever we learn from our parents in at the home, wh who are our uh, friends uh, because the family, friends and society. And so, in developing that particular value system this three contributes a lot. And then uh, whenever we go because this is taken from the western book. So, whenever we are going to the religious place right then we find that is there also we learn about the values because the uh, whenever we are having the uh, visit to the, the priest in the temple or into the father in the church uh, and they, they tell us about uh, that is uh, how to lead your life uh, and that is uh, imbibing the value systems. Then uh, by reading the books or the families and culture uh, the culture here I would like to mention that is a professional values. So, professional values we develop from the organization culture, what type of the organization culture is there and on basis of the organization culture we are having this particular aspects of the developing the behavior. Now, there are the different uh, types of the values are there, they are important to people tend to affect the types of decisions they make, how they perceive their environment and their actual behaviors are there and therefore, in that case uh, it, it, is, it is a selection. Whenever, uh, when we talk about the people tend to affect the types of decisions. So, therefore, in that case that is a decision, decision of what? So, th that is the how they are perceiving the, uh, their environment, whether the environment is ethical or unethical and when there is an ethical environment the ethical values will sustain that much the people know. There are two types of the values, the terminal values and the instrumental values are there. So, people vary in the relative importance they place on values. So, therefore, in that case ultimately values of life. Hmm? So, when we will say the terminal values, to attain these values there are the other values that uh, are the uh, facilitating or supporting and this type of the values they are called the instrumental values are there. So, uh, here we will always find that is the whenever we are talking about uh, the uh, terminal values or the instrumental values, because instrumental is big values are becoming also very important, it is not the terminal values only right. So, what uh, instruments are also required to be ethical your instruments cannot be the unethical and therefore, in that case it becomes uh, uh, very very important that is the whether you are having uh, that, that sort of this uh, uh, the instrumentation process which is generating the value system uh, or not uh, the, that is that decision is to be taken. Now, whenever we are talking about these different types of the terminal values are there, so to, uh, from the name itself it is very clear that is the terminal values are that is the end values are there. So, an exciting life, vibrancy in life right. So, therefore, many people uh, they always want they, they do not like the routine work. So, a person who is having an exciting life he cannot do a job which is causing them the very dull life. So, uh, what is required is therefore, the vibrancy is required, a sense of accomplishment is required that is a goal, a goal has to be achieved and therefore, in that case unless and until the goal is not achieved the value systems will not be there. A world of peace right, many people they want that is there should be a peaceful life, uh, a world of beauty and many people they want that is you know they should always look beautiful, family security is for like the Indian culture this is very prominent value system is there, social recognition yes professionally the people 
uh, want to be get uh, recognized uh, then naturally the continuing with the friendship happiness uh, freedom pleasure and wisdom is there so these these are the different uh, emotions basically we, which are becoming the part of values when we are talking about the uh, desirable end state of existence that a person would like to be the uh, to attend that uh, uh, value system at the end whenever we are talking about uh, uh, those uh, terminal values to achieve those terminal values there will be certain the instrumental values will be there so so what will be the instrumental value instrumental value will be the ambition so, like for example, the happiness. Happiness will depend on the ambition of the individual. That what sort of the ambition one one is having? Uh, if one is having the ambition uh, to be the leader of the society, right? Then in that case, uh, that particular person that he will become the the source uh, source for uh, uh, the ambition will be the source for the happiness is there. So, whenever amb ambition will be fulfilled, the person will be happy. Another one is the capability of the individual is there. So, what, whatever the capability is individual having uh, that is becoming the instrument because you have to achieve those particular terminal values. To terminal values uh, for example, freedom or uh, that there is the, uh, the uh, goal, goal achievement, a particular goal achievement and for that purpose it is the capability is required. If the person is having that capability then definitely this is a preferable mode of behavior. Right. So, therefore, in that case on basis of these uh, instrumental values the person decides that what will be the mode of uh, behavior or achieving the one's terminal values. So, therefore, if, if the person's the behavior is to achieve this particular uh, terminal values he has to make the justification with the help of the instrumental values are there. Now, a beautiful study has been done Jamke is another researcher who has looked at the differences in values. So, lot of research is uh, going on and therefore, we have to understand and that is the whenever people say it is a value what is the status of value system. So, that on basis of the research across generations and how these value differences affect their approaches to work and leadership. So, traditional list boomers are there, gen x is there and millennial is there and always we whenever we say no. Uh, one generation to another generation. So, there will be generation gap and as soon as there will be the generation gap there will be the change in the value systems are there and that is why whenever you are having the if you are studying the values of the traditionalist right. So, then you will find there is a different list is there whenever you will go for the boomers there will be difference between the traditionalist and the boomers list is there whenever you will go for the gen x you will find a Again, there is a change in the boomers value systems and, and the gen x value system is there and uh, whenever we talk about the millennial nowadays, then we find they are having the different value system is there. So, uh, which one, which value system is right or wrong? So, therefore, in that case it becomes very, very important that is the every generation was having the right value system from the given time because they have developed these value systems from the society itself. Dominant work values in the today's workplace is that is the veterans in 1950s or early 1960s 60 plus those who are so their value system was the hard working conservative confirming loyal to the organization. Boomers 1965 to 1985 40 to 60 years of age currently success achievement ambition dislike of authority loyalty to the career is there. There's uh, uh, so, 1985 Z generations, so 1985 to 2000 and it is a 25 approximately ages uh, 25 to 40. Work life balance, team oriented, dislike of rules, loyalty to relationship and therefore, in that case uh, th this will be more uh, work oriented. Uh, next years 2000 to present those who enter into the uh, workforce from 2000 under 25. So, they are the confident financial success self reliant, but team oriented loyal to the both self and the relationships are concerned. And therefore, in that case you will find that is the whenever we are talking about these uh, dominant work values uh, right from the veterans, boomers, zers, nexters uh, are the uh, and when change in value system that is a uh, hard working success uh, achievement ambition work life balance team oriented results of rule uh, and the confident financial success then definitely uh, these changes with the product of the generations uh, that, that has become the more and more dominating. 
Now, we cannot uh, study the values only in isolations, we have to talk about the ethics also. So, Philip will write in 1935 his talk, ethics is a branch of philosophy which is systematic study of the selective choice of the standards of right and wrong and by which he may be ultimately directed is there. So, a lot of work is done in 1935 by uh, Philip and researcher in the branch of philosophy right and then it talks about that is whenever we are talking about the values and ethics then there, there it is a philosophy of life. And this philosophy of life standard of the rights and the wrong and so therefore, it, it has to be directed. So, Richard William Paul and the Linda Elder in 2006 a set of concepts and principles uh, that guide us in determining what behavior helps or harms sentiment the creatures are there a very beautiful definition is there which talks about because the practical implication whenever we are talking about the practical implication of this particular system then it, it, it is a set of concepts and principles right. And therefore, in that case these concepts and principles which are forming the ethics those concepts and principles which are forming these ethics that will decide and guide us that is what type of the behavior helps or harms the uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this sentient creatures are there. So, it, it will be decided on the basis of your ethic uh, ethics only. So, uh, so what is required whenever you want to make the use of the values that has to be supported by the ethical leadership because you have to follow those ethics. So, leaders uh, who treat their followers with fairness hmm, this is about the ethics especially by providing honest, frequent and accurate information. Now, please understand these are not the just uh, buzzwords in, in the textbooks right. These are the practically observed and adopted by the successful leaders. So, therefore, if you want to be the successful leader then definitely you have to opt for these uh, ethical practices that is a fairness is concerned. You are required to be fair and especially by providing the honest, honest feedback is required right and the frequent and accurate information. You cannot just make the superficial studies and then uh, re respond to that rather than frequent and the accurate information is required and these are seen as a more effective and these uh, 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 fairness uh, 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 and uh, by these ethical practices by the uh, providing the honest and frequent and accurate information. Uh, so, then the, these leaders they have become the more successful and effective. Leaders rated highly ethical tend to have followers who engage in more organizational citizenship behavior is there, OCB is there and in the OCB we talk about the rights and duties are there. So, fundamental rights and fundamental duties that has to be followed in the case of the OCB is there. Now, this OCB is nowadays also converted into the positive uh, that is uh, organizational scholarship is concerned. Uh, related to this the definitions of the ethical leadership uh, you kill 2006 ethical leader is one who promotes honesty and mirrors his or her actions with their values and belief. I have given this example you see that honesty we cannot um, hide ourselves uh, from the uh, adopting the value of the honesty. Honesty has to be there and therefore, every, every researcher Every researcher is most, uh, has supported this particular value system and mirrors his or her actions because whatever the behavior is there, honesty is there, that honesty will be deciding about uh, how it is to be exercised on the basis of the others and that is called the mirror. So, when, when you are honest with others, so others will be honest to you and therefore, that mirrors are his actions with values and beliefs. Similarly, Freeman and Stewart has decided a matter of leaders having good character and the right values right. So, strong character uh, many times uh, because of uh, uh, the incomplete messages I will say. Why incomplete messages? Because we are getting through the social media, but we are not knowing the facts about it and therefore, they say that is the honesty is not the best policy. Many times the people talk about these issues, but then uh, here we will find that is the no. Those who are following the ethical style then definitely in that case they are becoming the successful. Otherwise, in the long term, in short term the person may be happy, employee may be happy, but in long term it will not. And the justice, ethical leadership characteristics are the justice right. So, therefore, one I we have talked about that is about the honesty is concerned, the another one is the justice. Um, now, whatever we do 
there is a justice. Whatever decision we take, there is a justice. So, that is why we say justification has to be given for a decision. Uh, then the respect uh, others is concerned, how much do you respect to others, uh, honesty are already have talked. Then the human, that is the personal touch, sensitive touch is very much required in case of this ethical leadership is concerned. Now, and uh, uh, working together brotherhood Vasudeva Kutumbakam, that is the focus on the team building, that is the objective is there. Value driven decision making is there, the decisions are not taken just because of the uh, personal choice rather than it is based on the value systems of the organization, encourages the initiatives uh, and therefore, the people are becoming more and more uh, uh, taking the initiatives, the leadership by examples because they prove themselves, because they have followed the values, they have been the ethical and therefore, they have pr proved themselves and as a result of which you will find that is the, they, uh, they have become the successful, because people follow the successful leaders only. The four ethical dilemmas are the truth versus loyalty, individual versus a community, short term versus the long term is there. So, therefore, when we talk about the truth versus loyalty, honesty answering a question when doing so could a compromise a real or implied promise of the confidentiality or others is concerned. So, therefore, in that case, uh, it is the uh, uh, whether the person he is really want to do this particular task or not. And if he really wants to do the task, then definitely he will be able to complete the task within time. Individual versus community is concerned, whether you should protect uh, uh, the confidentiality of someone's medical conditions, uh, when the condition itself may pose threat to the larger community and uh, the short term versus long term is concerned, as I was giving the example, people prefer to sometimes they follow the values in the short term, but they are required to be the followed for a long term. Justice versus mercy, such as deciding whether to excuse a person's misbehavior because of the extenuating circumstances or a conviction that he or she has learned a lesson. So, they have now, now this is become a very big issue, right. So, therefore, in that case all these four factors, uh, there is a truth versus loyalty, individual versus communities, short term versus long term, justice versus mercy. Whenever we are going for this type of the four ethical uh, decision making processes, then we have to decide about wh whether we are having uh, that value, value and the ethics uh, are, are justified or not. Then three principles for the resolving the ethical dilemmas, ends based thinking is there, often characterizes do what is the best for the greatest number of people. So, whenever we are into the ethical dilemma, we have to see that which decision will help to the most of the people, greatest number of the people. It is also known as the uh, utilitarianism in philosophy and it is premised on the idea that right and wrong are best determined by considering the consequences or results of an action is there and therefore, in that case we are evaluating that particular action. Rule based thinking is there when the Kantian philosophy and can be colloquially characterized as following the highest principle or the duty is there. Whenever we are following the highest principle or duty, then definitely we are talking about the rule based thinking is there. Care based thinking is there and the golden rule of conduct common in some form of many of the world's religions, do what you want others to do you. In essence, this approach applies the criteria of reversibility in determining the rightness of the action is there. So, this golden rule of the conduct, right. So, naturally, uh, we, will, we will like to see that the others, those who are surrounding us, they are doing the right things, right in the sense uh, acceptable by the society, acceptable by those value systems, acceptable by those ethical leadership. And when they are doing these things, we will say, yes, it is done correctly. The four sources of the unintentional unethical decision making are the implicit prejudice, biases that emerge from the unconscious belief, this is very very dangerous. So, therefore, in that case uh, as I was mentioning about that is a child first learns the our value, his value system from the parents and therefore, that biases. If there is a biases is there, uh, then definitely immediately the action is to be taken. The mental associates may not be true. Uh, biases can be costly, they may lead to the wrong decisions that is in hiring a, a, a firing decision is there. So, therefore, in that case uh, many times wh when we are having the shortcuts in judging others, this type of decisions arises. 
in group favoritism, bias that favors give a group results in discrimination against others and the misallocation of the resources are there and it erodes the bottom line and may lead to the losses or the lower profits are there. So, it, it, it is very very important that is the whenever we are talking about the management of resources right man, machine, material, money, method, minutes, whenever you are having the, these 6 M's and these resources then the, it, it has to be taken care of uh, that is the there is a proper distribution. Whenever there is a proper distribution then there will be nobody to uh, uh, complain to you about the in group favoritism is there. So, avoid this step of these uh, allocation of resources uh, to your own people and uh, then um, uh, um, making uh, the, the others person for waiting. So, that is not the right way. Over claiming credit is there bias that favors you. So, therefore, in that case uh, whatever we want to do that that is uh, that uh, we say that is yes this is uh, this is contributed by me. People tend to overestimate their contributions. So, whatever you are contributing uh, so in this world in the history history of the globe. So, they have been the very big contributors so many contributors and uh, if any successor says that this is because of me it is not because of only him he might be a major contributor agree, but not only because of him there were some minor contributors also. So, therefore, do not overestimate overestimate the contribution uh, claiming too much credit can uh, destabilize alliances and therefore, the one should not give go for the uh, uh, too much uh, uh, credit and uh, reduce the performance and the longevity of the groups is there. So, therefore, over, over claiming uh, that is I have done this that will be uh, uh, decreasing the moral of your group members. So, that is to be avoided. Conflicts of interest benefit you, conflict of interest can lead to the uh, intentionally corrupt behavior, right. So, therefore, in that case, those who are having the biased behavior, uh, so then in biased behavior, you are giving the help to somebody, and that is that is that is why that is causing uh, the dissatisfaction amongst others. Ethical versus the unethical climate is concerned. Ethical climates refer to those uh, in the organization, as I mentioned, in the society or in the organization. Ethical climate refers to those in which the ethical standards and norms have been consistently, clearly, and persuasively communicated throughout the organization. So, it is not only that is this ethical climate is expected from the lower management or middle management or the top management. It is, it is having the persuasively uh, communicated throughout the organization. So, everybody whether it is lower, middle or high they are supposed to follow the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the value systems in the organization. And embraced and enforced by organization leaders in both word and the example is there. So, therefore, if you are following that is the um, correct, if you are not following that will crea create the embracing for the ethical climate in the organization. Unethical climates are those in which the questionable or the outright unethical behavior exists uh, with the little action taken to correct such behavior or worse is that where such misbehavior is even condoned it is likely that employee experience some degree of moral distress whenever a manager is pursued uh, and therefore, in the case of that whenever the uh, employees they are having their own experiences they will decide about that is there uh, the moral will be that it will go down moral because that is the unethical climate is there. Uh, very simple example is that is about the rewards, incentives, promotions, increments and uh, from where you can judge. So, question arises how to create and sustain an ethical climate to create and sustain an ethical climate formal ethics policies and procedures such ethical policy is very important in the organization. And uh, whenever there is a clear cut manual clear cut policy is there to do's and do nots that whatever they are doing that is, that is will be acceptable uh, and uh, any things which will not be acceptable that is also to be communicated. Then the core ideology will be there that is the whenever we are talking about uh, the particular vision statement specially. So, that vision statement will decide about the integrity, integrity about that particular objective. So, if there is an integrity is there about particular objective and then you are behaving with that particular objective, yes you are towards to achievement of that goal. The structural reinforcement uh, tall structure, flat structure, organizational structure and therefore, in that case uh, whatever the structure you are creating then that, uh, that structure is having the strong support of the ethical um, behavior. 
So, it, it is not like this those who to whom departmental sections I am favoring and they are having the more power as compared to those departments to whom I am uh, I am not in, uh, favoring and they are having the uh, low uh, importance. No, in the organization structure itself uh, uh, it will be clear cut there is a empowerment will be is done properly and justified or not. So, therefore, in that case that is these values in ethical leadership it is long term is very very important and can we create uh, that climate yes we can create the climate unfortunately if you are into an organization where there is no clear cut ethical uh, uh, climate is there then i might, i will suggest that please go for that creation of such ethical and value based climate uh, as suggested in the previous slide these are the research papers linking ethical leadership and ethical climate to employees huh, and ethical behavior. So, therefore, in, in that case uh, uh, this is because this support is required for the future uh, work uh, that is the um, uh, leaders to whom we are developing they are ethical, they are having the ethical climate to employees and the ethical behavior is there. And what is the, uh, the moderating role of person? person organization fit is there. So, this paper is very very interesting uh, which will be deciding about uh, uh, this particular uh, purpose and in line with the hypothesis the outcomes from a sample of 295 workers working in the different Iraqi entities exhibited a positive relation between the ethical behavior of leaders and the ethical conduct of employees in the ethical climate. Uh, uh, otherwise also we can create this hypothesis which will be proven uh, successfully that is the if we are creating uh, the ethical uh, leadership uh, in the organization uh, the employees will be having that uh, uh, ethical uh, uh, decision making process. And the conduct of the employees uh, moreover it was observed uh, that is whenever we are talking of the person organization fit of the employees moderated the relationship between the ethical climate and the ethical conduct of employees such that the relationship was more robust for those in a high PO fit in a comparison to those with a low PO fit is there person organization fit is there. So, this study has important uh, per practical implication and determine that ethical leadership posi uh, positively influence the behavior of subordinates right. This is suggested similarly this is the case study uh, which you can refer I mean of integrity and the avid cyclist uh, and uh, as usual you can go through this particular uh, uh, case study and this case study is talk make a product that actually tested good and therefore, in that case whenever we are talking about uh, especially in India that is a uh, so oh, much uh, old uh, organization is there then definitely we, we, we are talking about that is the how ethical and value system based uh, uh, leadership is existing is there. So, environment and social issues are uh, evident and how the decision has been taken uh, uh, because of his commitment that you will see that lead leader is uh, having the uh, at a point where we have to find a way to maintain this open culture while we may be getting the bigger says the Shelly Martin director of operations it is a balancing act. Without knowing Gary Erickson's age where would you guess he falls in the four generations of workers as, de, uh, as delineated by the ZECMEC uh, and uh, consider the terminal and the instrumental values uh, recalling that leaders are motivated to act consistently with their values. Hmm, what will you appear to be the most important to Gary Erickson is there in this case study. But with the help of this case study I will also like to suggest that is you also decide what will be the helpful for you. These are the book recommendations for you and these are the references which you can uh, go for the further studies. Thank you.